likes her like that, but I'm sorry, like. No, not that much. It's a bit much, isn't it? I don't even remember how Ed asked me to be his girlfriend. Do you know what I mean? Like, if, if I think we were just sat on the sofa and he was like, you want to? I was like, sure. Yeah, do you want to do this? Even the okay. proposal wasn't even that crazy. That's what I'm saying though, but it depends though, because like, when you went, because I, I feel like a lot of the time, some people say, oh, I didn't know, was were you proper like surprised? Or did, yeah. Did, or did you did you have an idea that, okay, this is going to... I mean, we'd, we'd spoken about like, you know, we would want to in the future. Yeah. And I think we'd been in like a ring shop and he was like, oh, just like see what ring size you are. And I was like, okay, this is great. And then my two best friends knew about it. Yeah. He was like sending them pictures like, what do you think of this? What do you think of that? And then I was at their house one evening and she was like, oh, like try on my engagement ring. Like, do you know your ring size? And I was like, no, I'm just very stupid, like naive, I think. I just tried on the ring and I was like, Oh yeah, it fits. I must be the same size. And maybe like a week before we went, I was like, I think he's going to propose. Like, I don't know why. I just have a feeling that he's going yeah. to. And they was like, No, like that. You don't. You two don't even live together yet. Like you've only been together a year. Like no, it's not going to happen. Fully talked me out of it, and I was like, Yeah, no, it's not going to happen. Yeah, they were they were trying to keep on the they were yeah. trying to keep on the because I feel like people always some people I feel like they always have an idea. Yeah, I mean, we ha I had an idea to an extent that we'd said that we'd want to, and he's probably asked questions like, "What type of ring do you like?" and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. But like, I feel like couples do that anyway. Yeah, exactly. So you don't you don't really think, okay, maybe this is gonna happen, but it's like, yeah, like, you'd say, okay, I, I like this type of shape. It has to be. To be cut. fair, he was like, "This is the sort of ring that I think you would like," and he pulled up a picture, and I was like, "That is, that's what I would want." Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's risky because if you don't like, are you someone if you didn't if it wasn't a ring you like, would you be like? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a difficult one, isn't it? <laughs> because but that's something that's why you have to get it down to the T because if you're gonna yeah. spend money on a big gesture like that, or, or even like you know, have it have the gesture, pull out the ring and it's like actually you know what? It's not even what I like. Yeah. Someone that would be fem but someone would be female, but yeah. that's why you got ox find out. Yeah. Down to everything. Yeah. But then if you're gonna if you had those quotes it's kind of not obvious. You know, you might not know when, but you know mm. it's going to happen. Because surely, like, someone's not going to propose to someone if they don't know they're going to say yes. Yeah. But technically, that's what he said. Because uh, I said to him, "Was you nervous?" And he was like, "Well, no, because I knew you were going to say yes." Yeah, exactly. So yeah. he was like, "I had no reason to be nervous," but he, it was. It is like a nerve wracking. You like, you hopefully only do it once in your life, so it is like yeah. a small, like a build up. But the the thing that I didn't even have like a, oh, this is how I want to be proposed to. So I know people that are like, oh, okay. I want it at sunset. I yeah, want yeah. it here. I want it there. My only requirement was that I don't want it to be in front of people. Yeah. Because yeah. I w I'm a crier. I knew I would cry. Yeah. And he wants to cry in front of like everybody. So that was my only thing. So yeah, luckily it was no that, one around. That's, that's, so it was, because I know when, because you, because even from, I think bef the last time you came on here, you was counting on that trip. Yeah, so, do you know how long ago that was? That, that was, was like a year was, and a half ago. So, but but was it a trip you had? You guys had just planned, or was it? I think we must have booked it the month before. We booked yeah. it in the February, and I'm pretty sure we, we recorded in the March because it yeah, was near well, Mother's it was March, Day, weren't it? Was it? it was released on Mother's Day, so it must have been, was been it March before. Last, no, was it March last year? No, twenty. No, yeah, twenty nineteen. No, twenty twenty. Twenty. No, it wouldn't be twenty twenty. That was lockdown, wasn't it? it must have been twenty twenty one. Yeah. Last year, was it? Hold on, let me put you. it must have been because March twenty twenty, we wouldn't have been allowed to do it, would we? With yeah. lockdown, I think. That can't be two years ago. That's nuts. Well, it'll, be, that, it'll no. be two years in March next year. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, yeah. It so was, it's been about a year and a couple months. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah that's yeah. That was yes. Yes. That was a time ago. So like, yeah. I get, I'm so, pretty sure we booked it in the February to go. Obviously that christmas so yeah okay it had been booked quite early and we were all like it was always going to be that we was going to for christmas it sounds silly yeah but i always like wonder when people like travel and propose abroad how do they get the rings past security this was another thing this is why i did not think I'll it was be, happening I'll be paranoid that, okay you know what you go for, you go first yeah because certainly in, in airports you it's like you're in similar queues right mm -hmm. so you put your stuff Mm -hmm. 
Actually, no, I said like, no, you can just put it in, in the, in your main luggage. But even well, still, but though. would you do that? What if it got lost? That's what I'm saying. So that's, that's why I feel like, do you know how he, where he put it? Yeah. So this is another reason why I was like, it's definitely not because I have packed, I'm organized. I'm OCD. I, yeah. I pack his case perfectly packed. And then he had like a backpack and I had a smaller carry on case and my big case. Yeah. It was all packed. And we was leaving, I think at like three, four in the morning. So we wake up, get ready. It's all packed. I'm even putting last minute things in his case. Like there is not a ring in there. <laughs> And like, no idea. Yeah. And even in his backpack, obviously we're getting snacks at the airport. I'm shoving in like crisps and yeah. drinks and stuff. There is not a ring in there. And then we land, we get into the hotel room. I'm unpacking, I'm in the like bathroom. And he comes through and he's like, oh, I want to give you a Christmas present. Like, come out here. I'm like, oh, like we said, we weren't going to buy a present because yeah, yeah. we're here for Christmas. It's a lot of money. And they said, no, don't worry, like close your eyes close them and I open my eyes and he's on one knee of a ring and I literally was like how the fuck did you get that through That's what I'm saying. did he put it, he put he put it in, in his, his big no he put it in his big case so what oh, he did yeah. is in the morning because he's always running late yeah I was like waiting for him to go I was like we've got to go for the air leave for the airport like five minutes ago I was like right come on and he's like right you take like some of the cases out or something so he kind of got me out of the flat quickly and then they put it into his big case then Okay. But it was in the flat that evening. Just, just, do you know where it was? In the cupboard right underneath the TV. Okay. Oh, wow. In yeah, the TV he, cabinet. It was just, just chilling yeah, in there, a, the box. That, that's, that's, a, that's a, he completed that mission well, boy, because I would just be thinking, you know, I don't want to, it's a risky, but because mm. more time, certainly you, think, you might not feel like I'm going to lose my suitcase, but yeah, I wouldn't take that risk. If you're going to spend however that X amount of money on, on that, you put in your suitcase. It was not even because it'll get lost. I'm just thinking that because these people, when they take the bags, they mm -hmm. might just be flinging it and yeah. like yeah. like and say, like, I don't know, for whatever reason, it gets damaged or... <laughs> it's just so much. That, like, and I, I'm that person. I'd be, I'd be like, well, I'm going to lose it. <laughs> the, the, the pain. I was even scared to wear it at first. I was like, I don't want to wear it. And I would take it off every night and I wouldn't like, we went on holiday, I wouldn't wear it during the yeah. day because I didn't want to wear it in the pool. And he was like, just wear it. <laughs> so, so like, obviously, again, do you, so when you, I guess you, you can't shower with it, can you? I mean, you probably could, but I don't. That's that's yeah. when I take it off, yeah, yeah in the yeah. shower or bath. But I just got back from holiday and I like wore it every day, like in the pool and stuff. But it's not like I'm like in the pool all day. It's just yeah, yeah. in and out. So, I'm saying, so that, that, you must have been, what, what, like, what was going through your head? I know obviously I can imagine, yeah, your excitement, mm. but what was going through your head? Like I was this. just so shocked, like he just so shocked that it was happening, shocked that he'd snuck it through without me seeing, <laughs> just shock. Even though I've, I knew it would happen one day, I just didn't think it would happen that day. And it was it's such a long like plane journey. Yeah. And I just looked like crap, felt like crap. You know? And I just wanted to like shower, you know, when you get off oh, a plane, yeah, you yeah, just yeah. want to shower. Okay, so you... And he did it straight. We was I took a video of the hotel room as we walked in. And then the next picture was like 11 minutes later. <laughs> okay. So wasn't it? So you <laughs> did it straight oh, away. <laughs> I thought it was, this was like, because when I saw it on your, so I thought it was maybe you, you guys were like, you went on a walk or something. No, I just took a picture of it like um out during the day like with like snow in the oh, background type okay, of thing okay, okay. but that's what i'm saying that's probably the best thing because if someone's telling you okay get ready we're going to that mm. and you have to look your best or whatnot you'll probably think okay maybe this is going to happen because you don't want to like there, people, girls always say oh like do you want to have their nails done mm. so if yeah it's, if you're so, you know <laughs> I mean? unless, unless you're cropping <laughs> your, if you're not looking nice unless you're cropping the nails a bit and then, yep. yeah showing it but usually that's the best thing because you, you're not supposed to expect it. Yeah. But it's like, you know, and I guess if it's not a big, to be fair, I don't know. It, it doesn't matter. Like everyone's different. Like you, you say you don't, you don't like the, like the public yeah. thing. And some people might want a certain thing or like, it has to be like, I look of looking the stars or whatever, but okay, you just like, okay, it's not. Yeah. I think <laughs> it, it just makes a bit of like pressure on it. So it was nice. It was just us and, like we yeah. enjoyed it and then um i think it was about five or six p.m in canada so maybe like 10 11 o'clock 
back home. Yeah. So then I was just like, I FaceTimed my friends because they were messaging me like, oh, have a nice holiday. And then I found out that they knew. Yeah, yeah. So I FaceTimed them and they was like, oh my God. And I was like, why are you acting shocked? Yeah, <laughs> you knew. <laughs> but yeah, do you think your, your, your dad, your, I'm sure you probably knew as well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, he, <laughs> my boyfriend had asked my brother and my dad another family wedding we had had um, in the summer before that. Um, and my brother was like, yeah, this is great. Like, go for it. Yeah. Apparently my dad was like, yeah, but he was drunk and my dad doesn't remember. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? So when I told my dad, he was like, oh, this is nice. And I was like, you know, he did ask you, but I think he was a bit drunk. So he doesn't really remember. Yeah. No, it must, it must be like, obviously it's, it's not, well, I don't, I wouldn't know what, as in from a, from his point of view, it must be like ecstatic because that's something, you know. I won't say every girl's dream, but it's like cool. You're with someone after mm -hmm. a while. You want to get, you know, what I mean, you want. That's what you the, the next yeah. step in it. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. it must feel like, yeah. You know, and like with everyone in that who, you know, has been proposed to, that's going to be a a big thing. So naturally, you're gonna, you know, want to tell family. Mm. You're gonna be excited, isn't it? But like, obviously, for those, you know, where like, I don't know how to how to word, word it, but like in your in your case, you know, you're. You know, you lost your mum and mm -hmm. not not being able to share that news in it. It's always mm. kind of like like bittersweet. Like how how did you like feel not being able to yeah. like, well, do it, that? It's strange because I was with someone before um, for quite a while, and maybe people thought it may happen. But my mindset back then was like, I just don't want to get, don't want to do it, don't want to get married, d didn't want to have children. Yeah, yeah. Like, I didn't really verbalize it that much, but I, in my head, I didn't want it to happen because it would have, I was worried about how I would react as if, you know, I can't tell mum. Yeah, okay, yeah. Like, I can't, I can't give birth without my mum there with me. Yeah. Like, how am I going to do that? And mm. my sister, she got married the same year my mum died and I don't know how she did it. So I was always just in the mindset of, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. And then when I was single before I met my fiance now, it was again like, just don't want it, don't want it. Because I was just so scared about how I would feel. Yeah. I didn't want something so happy and like lovely and like a nice warm feeling you should have to be taken away. Mm. So it was just scared to be honest. I, w I was scared about how I would feel. But then when I started getting the feelings of like, do you know what? I want to get married. I want to have children. My life can't stop completely just because I was one person I can't tell the news to. And then when I started feeling like that, my perception did change. And there was no sad feelings on the, that day I got yeah, engaged. Yeah, it was, I was, gonna ask it was the yeah. happiest day. I didn't feel a little bit sad at all. Like yeah. obviously I have my moments where it was like, she'll be happy. It would be nice if I could tell her, but it is what it is now. My mindset is so different to what it would have been back then. Even when we last did yeah. the podcast, my mindset's very different. Yeah, so mad because even just like you're you're in a situation where you feel like I don't want to get married, I don't want to have kids, mm. or like, and that's like that's usually in your case that's what grief does. You know, yeah. I remember it's not the same, but I remember when my mum passed, I was like, no, nah, listen, I'm not gonna like. I don't know, maybe like, maybe it sounds, I don't know if it sounds dark, but maybe I was being dramatic, but but looking back, it wasn't me being dramatic, but just like, because I don't know how I'm going to function, do you know what I mean? I don't yeah. know how this, you know. Yeah. So like, at that point, it's like nothing else matters. So mm. there's not going to be no coming back from this. This mm -hmm. is like the worst of the worst. I'm like finished. I'm not, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like yeah. done. L life, I, life as I, as I knew it. Yeah. Well, I know it was done, do you know what I mean? So you don't yeah. think, oh, you're going to, smile again and then look, I don't know how long after that but you know a couple of years later I find myself like you know I'm I'm, I'm, I'm back to myself mm -hmm. do you know what I mean and sometimes like with grief obviously like we've always had time and time again it doesn't go away and like like when we go through stuff like we, we go through the funeral of the person we buried it's a it's acknowledgement that the person's gone mm -hmm. do you know what I mean so when you go through like you know milestones or big life moments like weddings and marriage proposals it's yes yeah, it's, it's a good it's a good occasion but it's like a, a reminder okay this person is going to be there but at yeah. the same time the grief is still there but it doesn't mean the joy is going to be taken away it's just mm -hmm. it's just bittersweet that's only it's bittersweet yeah yeah like, i used to dread all of those like 
special occasions. Yeah. So Mum died just before I turned 21. So it was like, my, like, you know, you have those big birthdays, like yeah. your 16th, your 18th. And I was like, oh, that's all I got. I didn't, like my 18th was the last big birthday I had yeah. with her. And um, my 21st was probably like the first one where it was like, this is different. Probably because it was the first birthday without her. Yeah. And it was a big one as well. It like seems like nothing now because it was so long ago. But um, it was like a big birthday. But I just used to dread any family things. I remember my nephew's first birthday. I almost didn't go. I cried all morning. I was like, how how am I supposed to do this? I was in such a low state. And there's pictures of me of that day that I don't even really remember. And like, you can tell I'm not, I'm smiling in pictures, but it's not smiling. Yeah. <laughs> it's It's so strange to look back and think, how did I almost not celebrate my nephew's first birthday because of that? Mm. But but that's what I'm saying. That, but even that alone, yeah, that that's just testament to like growth and that you know what, you still have strength because a lot of times people might say, well, that's it doesn't seem like a big deal, you know, you not being able to like, you being smiling again, not being able to not being able to like get past that. But you saying you know on your day you got proposed to like you you didn't feel type of way that all of that is it's good signs and mm. you know I, and I don't want to like obviously like sound make the sound the wrong way come out the wrong way but I feel like a lot of people haven't come back from yeah that trauma or grief and obviously everyone's grief is different but mm -hmm. so I feel like a lot of the time it's a, a, a blessing and to be like you know what, I'm I'm still myself I haven't lost myself do you know what I mean mm -hmm. yeah you, I'm, obviously the, that is that you can't never bring back the person yeah. you lost you know but I always feel like still keeping that same like momentum or having that you know like for you for example you're like i'm never gonna get married or and the, and your partner at the time was probably thinking well that's i don't know i don't know if this is well i don't know what I don't mm -hmm. know if this is for me because yeah you know naturally again in mm -hmm. most relationships that's like the next yeah type of progression isn't yeah it? but you've met someone else that actually you know what no like forget all that i don't i do want to get married and mm -hmm. you know you know like, do those things and sometimes as well that's what happens because you just feel like your life is, I can't get past it. Yeah, I just, uh, grief, I don't think grief will ever go. You never get yeah. over it. It's never gone. But I think you, I, well, you, I think I've just learned ways to cope with it. Yeah. But back then I didn't think I would be able to. Because it's it's been, it'll be eight years in um, March since she died. So from back then for the first couple of years like I was like how am I supposed how am I supposed to get married and my my brother and sister have both got married since she's passed I've mm. got a nephew all this great stuff's happened and it's kind of a day where you're a bit like this might be a bit of a tough one and yeah. then it happens and you're okay and you're you might have had a moment you know at my brother's wedding she was obviously mentioned everyone has a bit of you know arm around each other mm -hmm. moment but you get through it yeah exactly but do you feel like they helped though as in in the sense where you know seeing that okay, your sister got married your brother got married like okay did it help in the sense where give you that kind of thought of i can do this too yeah because, you know my students have done it obviously you i know you were saying you guys are all different in terms of how we dealt like with your it. emotions yeah yeah like i think you said let me see if i can remember <laughs> <Justin>, you're <yeah. laughs> you like you were quite what did you say my, yeah, my, remind me. Sorry. My sister was quite emotional, yeah. and my brother was quite angry, and I think I was a bit in between. But yeah, yeah, got on with it more than them, and never showed emotion as much as they did, whether it be anger or um, crying or etc. But yeah, my sister, um, she, my mum died in the March, and my sister got married in the September. But my sister, when we knew my mum was terminal, she was going to move her wedding. Um, closer she was just trying to move okay, it closer okay, so that mum yeah. could go um, but I mean yeah, it was meant to be how it was meant to be um, and even in a letter that my mum left us she was just like you know Becky's wedding must go ahead we had a family holiday book so that holiday must go ahead like make sure it happens yeah, and yeah. all of that but I, I, to this day I don't know how my sister got through her wedding day because it was maybe six months yeah. she was obviously mentioned but I think at that point, 
I don't even think I got emotional. I think I was very numb still and very emotionless, like I was at the start of it. And then I went through the motions of like, I can't do that. I can't I can't have a child. Then because my sister had a baby. I don't know how she did that. She's got like we have aunts and we have great people around us, but I was like, you haven't got a mum to ask you what to do. <laughs> yeah. Like advice. It I I don't know how she navigated it, but she did amazing and she still is. But my brother's was a couple of months ago and that was amazing as well when she was my mum was mentioned and it just I don't know. I think seeing them do it has made me realize I can do it and I want to do it. It's yeah. not so much that I don't want to do it anymore. I think I, I was just scared. <laughs> yeah, no, it happens, man. I mean, like, that's, and that's the thing with, you know, like I feel like in general, when, you know, you go through life changing events, it, it, it sucks your, you know, like I was saying before, it sucks your, like your enthusiasm. Because usually when we're younger, we have all this idea, oh, I want to get married by this age and do this and that. Mm. And like, you know, when things happen, you that that sort of child like innocence has kind of been bursting. Because I remember with me, I've always been like, yeah, you know what? Quite like simplistic in terms of like how I see life, you know, you know, find someone, do this, do that. So when that happened now, like, I'm just like, okay, this is maybe the life that I, I think I, I'm going to have, it's not going to happen. And mm -hmm. I think, I don't know, like, don't get me wrong, it was it was still hard. But I think w the reason what made me feel like that is because it was like both of my parents, like, it was so quick. Yeah. I'm just like, okay, this is a bit mad, like, there's no coming back from this, do you know what I'm trying to say? And mm -hmm. and sometimes I even, like, like I, I know it is through, like, you know, just like, my, my faith in God and friends and stuff. But sometimes I feel like I don't know how, how I, like, I, I, I did it sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's, it's weird because it's like, you know, that that is enough to, and again, I, when I always say, I've said it so much times and, I, and I, I'm not even trying to be dramatic, but I don't even know how peop, people have, could go through it because losing one parent, mad. Another mm -hmm. another parent is like, that's great. I don't mean, I'm, not, I'm not the first person to, but like, so no. like how do you, how can you bounce back from that? Do you know? It's but like, I have had people say that to me because out of my, not even just a friendship group, but just the wider people that I just went to school with, I didn't know anyone whose parent had died yeah. at, at my age. Yeah, it's the and same. it was just kind of everyone was just like, I don't know how you're doing it, and I was just kind of like, oh, I don't know either. <laughs> I I genuinely don't. Now I look back, I like I don't know how mm. I did, but I think it's good to look back and know that it does get better. It never goes away the feeling and the grief and the sadness, and you have bad days, good days, but it does it does get better. Yeah, no, definitely, I, I agree, man. I think sometimes. I used to be quite wary of saying that because, you know, everyone has, you know, their grief, their grief story is different. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I, you know, I think obviously it's not nice losing someone, but I think I'm grateful that, well, let me not say grateful, but like my mom's passing, my parents' passing wasn't like, I don't know, you know, due to like, so I think tra it's tr traumatic or mm -hmm. like they, they were like murdered or mm -hmm. you know what I'm trying to say. And, and yeah. when I think of people in, in those situations, I'm just like, like it's, it's crazy, man. Mm -hmm. Like it's uh, that you have to be not thankful, but you have to just be appreciate that how, how far you've come because. Yeah. Like, yeah. Because it, uh, th there's someone that I know that, um, that unfortunately passed away due to like an accident and it's mm. just kind of like like in a blink of a second it's gone and that my eight were younger than me so it's when I think of it like that I, I don't want to say the word grateful as well but you are kind of like at least you got that time at least you could kind of prepare when it is an illness yeah. like that to a certain extent you're still never you're never fully prepared but yeah with with us we knew it was going to happen mm. we just didn't know when <laughs> yeah no that's what I'm saying and I feel like you know Sometimes, if if people who have lost people due to uh, like very difficult circumstances, it's crazy because you might have a lot of answers as to why. Mm -hmm. like, you know, even when I was the show, I was, I was telling you about mm -hmm. like because I was I was on like Twitter and I was kind of going down a rabbit hole of just seeing all the tweets about it. Some people were saying, "I feel like I don't know why they they did the made the show to begin with mm -hmm. because it's like what about." You know the victims of the victims of that's very true of the people like yeah you know would they want that 
Like, yeah. you didn't jump in and say. So I feel like it's things like that because, God forbid, if I went through, like, lost someone through, that like, someone was murdered by a serial killer, and then you're seeing that as a show is being made out of it. Yeah. I feel yeah, like. That must be a very strange feeling. Like, a bit, you know, like, and that's yeah. the thing, though, even with those, and I, and I feel like a lot of the time, those, like, like I was saying, those true kind of serial killers, there's, I don't know why there's so much like movies made out of that where like they just romanticize this, like this serial killer. I know, but then there's people like me and you that love to watch it. Like, you know I mean? it's, it's crazy. But, but I, I, feel, I feel like my thing, I'm just sort of a curious person. So me too. I'm, I'm always like, what happened when they were a child <laughs> that caused them to yeah, do that as yeah, an adult? Exactly. Something is always messed up. But do you know with this show, because I don't know if you're going to watch it. So I, I, will. So I will. So I, so I won't say too yeah. much. Yeah. But I feel like, I don't know if this would be a spoiler. Maybe, oh, okay, I won't say it to him. But I feel like with this show, like it does kind of go into that phase of okay, going back to the killer's childhood and seeing how they grew up. Like, and yeah, a lot of time, maybe in terms of film production, they do it because they want to make you understand. But I feel like, like I said, I, I've never been so annoyed watching something. <laughs> yeah. Like, because I, I feel like we shouldn't even... It's never, never mind how we grew up. Look, look, I'm not saying things happen to people, like people mm. might have bad upbringings, but listen, I'm sorry, but that doesn't excuse you killing like 17 people. No. Do you know what I'm trying to say? And no. It, and it's just, yeah, and, but I, I feel like what's even crazier, and this is the last I, I was saying it, and I think people <laughs> don't know what I'm talking about. Um, so for context, it's the, it's called, it's called Dharma, like the, some guy called Jeffrey Dharma, who's like some serial killer. And what's even what's even sick about it? Yeah, like he was specifically target. I know, like obviously most serial killers they target people, but he was how can I explain it? He was specifically targeting like black and Asian people. Madness. Like because he 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 kind of knew that they were uh, not like taken seriously, but how can I put? He knew that basically like the. He could exploit them because the the system, when I say system, as in, as in like the police system, the, ju- the judicial system, they didn't really care about like black and Asian life. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's what I was saying. I, I, I'm trying to wear the cap so I don't spoil it for you. <laughs> I know you might want to watch it, but yeah, it's, it's it's crazy, man. And I feel like I've, I feel like I'm on episode five. I'm just thinking, you know what? Like, yeah, this this is this this is getting like dark. Mm. But another one, have you seen the Ted Bundy one? I have, but I don't think know if I finished it. No, I think I think there, there were so many documentaries, but that was there was actually a film on that actually. Mm. Um, Zach Efron was the playing playing Ted Bundy, but he's like another guy where like he was. Like his story was similar, like serial killer, but it's crazy because they were saying like literally there would be girls that come to the courtroom. Cause they oh, and the, yeah, because he, yeah. Do you know? How, do you know? How, it doesn't make sense. Do you know how mad that is, and and it's the same with um, this Jeffrey Dahmer guy. Some people said, "Oh my gosh, he, I know it's crazy what he did, but the guy was so handsome." <laughs> I was thinking, <laughs> like, like that's that's just mad. But I don't know. It does true crime. Yeah, I, I, I said I only watch it during the day because sometimes like, I started last that. night. When you start, even episode one, yeah, from the episode one, I'm like, this is just too mad, <laughs> like. I'm but quite no, intrigued to watch it now, though. No, I think, yeah, no, definitely watch it. And, like, I think um, the... So, I think the... No, I think his family, which is weird, what I saw, apparently his family were a bit angry that they didn't get some of the profits oh. of the show. But I'm like, your son's a serial killer. Like, why do you, why do you care about... True. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's, just, it's just mad. It's just mad. And I feel like, like, back to what I was saying earlier, like, Lose like one of the victims, obviously, they that's someone's son, daughter, or you know, someone's mm-hmm. son, like someone's loved one. So, the family can you imagine that is just traumatic? That's gonna take years, or, or, or might take years of just healing or going, yeah, through it because that's a whole different kind of grief, yeah. And that's, and that's what I, I was saying, like, it's like, thankfully, we're not. It's, it's sad for people going through that kind mm-hmm. of thing, but thankfully, it's, that's not. Because I don't know how, if I would be the same or how, how I would. I think it would be a lot more like anger, possibly. Yeah, exactly. Because you, you want answers and you want. Yeah. So yeah. I don't, yeah, I, I just think those, those, um, 
those shows. But I always wonder, like, who, like, is it who who is in the wrong? Is it the the person, the producers who want to make a shot of it, or the actors who, yeah, who, who want to play those roles? Because even today, I was thinking, like, on one hand, it's yeah, I don't know, like, who 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 would you think is? Yeah, I don't know. Like, wrong. I guess a bit of a mixture, to be honest. I can't imagine that as an actor being approached like, do you want to play a serial killer? Yeah. <laughs> because you look like him. <laughs> yeah, like, but the, the, the guy, <laughs> the guy who, um, the guy who played um, Jeffrey Dom, he was saying that, you know what, like, it was a bit preparing for it. He felt a bit uncomfortable because, like, the, yeah. you know, the research you have to do. And even he was saying, like, he was very careful that he didn't want to, like, exaggerate anything. Yeah. Because, and the reason why I said that because of purely because of the victims of mm. the show, and so that's why even when I'm watching, that's something. That's why the the guy was mad because if yeah. he's saying that he don't exaggerate anything, so maybe something might be fictionalized. But a lot of the time, what he was doing was really what he was doing. So nothing was mm. really kind of you know like for for you know sometimes they say in some films like this is a true story, but some things have have been like for your. Uh, yeah yeah exactly. so, so you know when you, yeah it was mad like, but what's what? mad is imagine if you had a relative or a friend that was a victim in that and then you go on twitter and everyone's talking about this really cool true crime series yeah, that's that's the thing and though. your friend or family member was a victim within that but to everyone else it's just like a trend in like top 10 on netflix yeah i'm not gonna lie that, that, that's that's i think that'll be triggering though like and that's the thing that's why yeah. i think you know, again with these shows, if I was an actor, would I want to play? I I I don't know. I I probably wouldn't. I probably wouldn't. But then you, yeah. you're, it's like, but I feel like you're an you're an actor, so I, I understand that. Well, I don't understand, but I probably wouldn't. So those who do take it on, they, it's like, yeah, they know what. Yeah, I think when it comes to those true crime documentaries or dramas, I do prefer it when it is more of a documentary and it's got like footage or like the police cams and it's not actors if that makes sense it's not been made into like, it's not been dramatized i'd rather it that it's got you know like the police talking and maybe yeah. their family talking rather than it all oh, okay. dramatized yeah, so yeah, for so like yeah yeah, yeah yeah and it's yeah that that makes sense so it's like because then it's more informative and you understand what happened i still think it will be triggering yeah but it's not it's not like a whole set where someone's like dressed up as the person that yeah, killed yeah, all these exactly. people. <laughs> yeah, and but I, I know like obviously it's not gonna change anything. But I feel like with those, if people are gonna, what well, the producers are gonna make sure that like, I reckon they should, whatever money they make from, they should give to the yeah, give yeah. To I the, wonder if they do to the families. Like probably yeah, not. <laughs> I don't know. And, and again, as the actor, again. But then, if you take it on and say, "Listen, I'm going to donate every money I make from this," I don't, I don't know, I don't know actually, I don't know. Because you are, you're bringing attention to that serial killer. Because people like me, I'll start googling him after. I'll be watching old clips of like, yeah, I'll be doing that after, and it's 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 drawing more attention to the serial killer than the victims. Yeah, that's true. Because more often than not, I'm not going to sit there and Google all of his... I think he killed a lot of people, right? Yeah, I think okay. they said it was seven, 17... Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to... Like, as a viewer, are you going to Google them 17 people? Yeah. <laughs> but that's but that's the thing. I don't know. This is why I feel like I'm, I'm just always... When I watch these things, because before I found out about a documentary, the film, uh, maybe the series, maybe two days ago, I didn't know who, who this guy was. No, I've, I've like, never heard of him. So then I, then I start doing, going on Google, okay, and I'm reading different things and... Mm. So again, I'm like you as well. Like if I watch something, I'm, I go down a rabbit hole. Okay, mm -hmm. I want to find out this. It's, it's that's why I kind of the same thing I kind of did with um, when the Queen died. I started. Yeah. I start watching the Crown again, then I start, I start watching documentaries <laughs> about. The, I don't I don't know why it's just it's just yeah like I always 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 do that yeah so I, I feel like you're right I feel like if there was a documentary where like they ask some of the families do you want to be part of this mm -hmm. you know because on the on the flip side I think some of these documentaries. Is, the ones on circle is it's always to like raise I don't know yeah raise awareness in it not yeah. aware, not awareness sorry that maybe just to inform people about because mm -hmm. how many documents have you seen where they've said oh like the most horrific serial killers in history or mm -hmm. you know I don't I haven't heard much about UK ones though 
It's only it's Mon- always America. It's always American, <laughs> like the bad ones. Because I watched one. It wasn't like a serial killer thing, but it was uh, a. You might have seen it as well. It was a. Was it called something to do with? I don't know what it's called, but basically what it, what it was, it was like lit people who were in relationships and they had killed. Oh. Uh, I forgot what it was called. I think I know what you mean. Because Th- they'd killed like a relative of some sort. Yeah, like there, there was one where, episode where like th- this woman like married this guy. He was quite rich and he was like in a care home and she wanted to kill him and to get the money. And there's another episode on this lady who yeah it was like different people in yeah, different yeah, episodes yeah, yeah. I, I think w- yeah. yeah yeah I watched that's like the last I watched that one and, and the one I saw the one trailer for the one about was it my Sin- Sins of Our Mother that just looked mad the mad thing with that is that no spoilers but um, the ending of it it's like still ongoing like the court case is next year oh really so like you do find out of a lot of information but the court case is next year because it only happened like just before lockdown which is mad because oh, when wow. you're watching it you're like this must have been about 30 years yeah, ago that's, yeah that's how you think the way they're shows. speaking and what happens i'm just like surely that stuff doesn't happen now yeah. <laughs> and then right at the end you kind of find out what's happened but then you don't find out the details and you don't find out any sort of like outcome of like prison or anything like that yeah and it's because it's a waiting trial next year. So what, I wonder why they they done a documentary so quickly then. Because I thought that, yeah. But maybe they'll do another part on it. Or maybe it's to bring attention for people to watch the yeah, trial next year. I saw that and I was just like, oh, this looks interesting. But again, these shows, like, I, I feel like you have to... Yeah, because I, I, I have to watch it in, in the right frame of mind, man. Because, mm. like... And I don't know why... I won't say I... I enjoy them, but it's just mm-hmm. to like, okay, so I can see like, yeah, I'm just curious. Like, what yeah. Happened, like, and, and, but, it's the yeah. curiosity gets the better of you. But like I said, when you watch, when you watch this dumb <laughs> one, yeah, like watch it at, during the day as early as possible if you can. <laughs> because yeah, honestly that, yeah, I'm not going to lie. That was, that was, in, that was intense. I'm very so, intrigued so one. now. <laughs> and like, I just, I was there, was there another one there's one called um about some guy called john john gase john gase john gase have yeah. you seen that i one? recognize the name but i can't remember i feel like i've watched so many i can't remember what happened in it yeah he was he was like another like crazy <sighs> what's mad okay this is not a spoiler because this is it's, it's out there that he because obviously the guy was a, a killer but he was also weird because he he um uh what's the word? So what what they call them? He was a was a cannonball. Oh yeah. Yeah. So it just yeah, it's just, yeah. it just weird. That's the weird that's the that's the it's weird, weird. Of, weirdest of the weird that one. But um <laughs> but yeah, no true yeah, true crime, like true crime. Honestly it's a weird one when you're watching it because when we're watching it we don't we don't really we're not like the the victims or the, the family of the victims, it must be crazy. But I feel like mm-hmm. these stories that are, I don't know, some people like I said, some people are are mad. Mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah, I, I know this guy's he's we about to run out, run out <laughs> of time. But um no, I appreciate you coming. Thank you. Um for having me again. And like I was gonna say, yeah, like wedding planning, I hope that how's that how's that going? We really haven't done a lot to be honest. Really? But just because we've had a really busy summer, um, just busy with work and things like yeah. that. So hopefully going into next year, we'll we'll figure out exactly what we want to do. Obviously, it's going to be a multicultural wedding, so we need yeah. to figure out all of that as well. Nice, nice. It'll yeah, be, that, it'll be fun. 